Are you ready to write your first Perl script? I hope you are because I'm ready to show you exactly how to do it. And I want this to be interactive. Don't just sit back and listen to this, watch this. I want you to actually create your own script right along with me. Just follow along. You'll find out it's actually much easier to create a script than you believe. So first things first. Perl is an interpreted language, so you have to have an interpreter to interpret your script. Whether you're on Mac, you're in Windows, you're in uh, Unix, you've got to have an interpreter. Now, on Unix, you're going to probably find in the user bin Perl directory, you're going to find a Perl interpreter already installed. But regardless, you've got to get an interpreter on your machine. If you don't know how to do that, go ahead and click right here or look in the description for instructions on how to install a Perl interpreter. So we're going to move right along, assuming you already have a Perl interpreter installed. So let's get right into creating our first script. All right, so I'm going to be using VIM for my text editor. That's how you create your script. You can create them in text editors, VI, VIM, Emacs, uh, Notepad++, or Notepad, whatever you like. Whatever is your flavor, whatever floats your boat. But for this tutorial, I'll be using VIM. So follow along in VIM or your favorite tutorial or your favorite editor. Wow. All right, so go ahead and... Uh, for VIM users, you're gonna type in VIM space myfirstscript.pl. Enter. Now you're in the VIM editor. Now let's start creating our script. So I for insert mode, so I and enter, and now you're gonna type in the first line that you're gonna find on a Perl script, which is hash bang forward slash user forward slash bin forward slash Perl. So now the location of the Perl interpreter has been identified, and this is relevant in a Unix Linux environment. And you do that by simply having the first line having the hashtag or number sign, exclamation point, and then you're going to have forward slash user, forward slash bin, forward slash Perl. Enter for the next line, and now we're going to have this script actually do something. So what we're going to have it do is print. So type in print, P-R-I-N-T, space, and in quotes, double quotes, we're going to enter this. So right after me, you're going to write, I will subscribe to Carlisle's channel, exclamation mark, close your parentheses, and then you're just going to type in a semicolon. You're going to always end your lines with a semicolon when you're scripting in Perl. All right? And that's it. You're done. You've actually created a script. This can actually be run right now. So go ahead and type colon, and then you're going to type Q for quit, W for write. So colon QW, enter. And now you're going to go and run your script. Type in Perl, space, myfirstscript.pl, enter. Wow, look at that. It works. You just created your own script, your first script. See how easy that was? I told you. All right, so let's take it to the next level. So now what we want to do is, if you notice the way that it output, it's kind of a little jumbled here. So let's let's add a new line into that. So go back into the editor. So vim, myfirstscript.pl, enter. And now we're going to go in insert mode again, hit I, enter. And now we're going to go to where it says channel exclamation mark, and we're going to put a backslash N for new line. That's it. Just go ahead and save that. So go ahead, QW, enter. Boom! And then you're going to type in Perl space myfirstscript.pl, enter. Now you see the new line. You see what it did, uh, how it changed the output, all right? Now we're going to take input from the user. So let's go back into our script. So VIM myfirstscript.pl, and now at the bottom line, I want you to add this. Dollar sign, channel, and then space equals space less than all caps, S-T-D-I-N for standard input. And then greater than sign, and then you're going to end every line with semicolon. That's right. So what we're doing is we're declaring a variable, dollar sign channel. So think of dollar sign channel as a placeholder for some kind of value. The value that we're going to use this placeholder for is standard input. So whatever the user types in is going to be assigned to dollar sign channel. Whenever we want to, re whenever we want to refer to that data that the user types in, we're going to refer to dollar sign channel because that's again a placeholder. So go ahead and QW and run your script. All right, so now we see that it's asking for an input. You can type something in, hit enter, but it's not going to do anything because we didn't say to do anything to take the user's input to assign it to a variable. So let's go back into the script. VIM, my first script.pl, go to the last line, and you're going to type in print dollar sign channel. And now when you run this script, it's actually going to print back what the user outputs. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and run the script now, save it, run it. And there you have it. So that's it for this episode. In, a, in the next episode, we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to look at some common errors and things like that. So definitely subscribe, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, 
sum it up. <laughs> <laughs>